It's honestly not even up for debate, but this was the spiciest episode of Kaguya-sama Love is War. Not only did they have some profanity in this episode, not even once or twice, but a few times, and even with the hilarious way the subtitles kind of portrayed the profanity, there's some remarks that just, it's so enunciated to the point of like, you can just hear F it. And I'm just like, that is brilliant. I can't believe just how extreme these characters responded to the insane rap battle that we got introduced to, which, you know, I thought your boy Kunming this week was going to be the only show that would have a great rap battle, but leave it to Kaguya-sama to time it perfectly so both of those series have an insane episode that you just wish never would have ended, right? The thing that really stole the show for me, though, is what I was hoping was going to happen after last week's episode, and that is, of course, Chika misunderstanding Aisaka and Miyuki's relationship because I just love how sometimes in your face but also subtle her lust for the boy's love can be. I mean the very final like scene with her like observing what seems to be boy's love to her. She has a nosebleed as Kagi in the background is just almost face palming being like I don't understand what's going on. Or just the number of times like in the middle of the rap battle she's talking about how should she just accept it or should she break it up and how her heart's a fluttering. This girl has no chill for her BL love, and you can tell she's been downloading some new manga after experiencing that. But I honestly think that of all of the performers in this episode, to my surprise, it was actually Kaguya who had the catchiest moment for me. There was something so earworm about her trying to disrespect Hayasaka, which immediately I was like, you can't disrespect her. This girl is literally like, she's literally pushed heaven and earth for your bullshit, and you're really going out of the way to say she's a child and she can't, you know, admit to her feelings. That's why I love it when she grabs the mic and throws it right back at her. The disrespect was strong in this episode, but I mean, I think the characters needed to get out of their system. But I can't lie, just the way Kagi's voice actress, like, gave her delivery there. It was so amateur, but it was so earworm that it was hard not to kind of have like a bit of a jam going on, kind of bopping along. But I was surprised. I was very surprised to see that because... Chika can't rap, so therefore Miyuki has to teach Chika to rap, so then Chika could teach him to rap. It makes no damn sense whatsoever, and the characters themselves do not think it makes sense, but somehow it worked. I truly thought we were going to have a character die off this episode, that their eardrums would implode, that would then therefore make their head explode, they'd have to write him off, a funeral would happen. But somehow, the mess worked out, and uh, he wasn't bad. He really, truly wasn't bad. Kaguya didn't understand a lick of it, didn't understand why people liked it, but ultimately, the tears from Aizaga said it all. Like, she went from literally feeling like her ears were violated to saying, that was pretty good, actually. And I'm so glad I don't have to die from listening to this anymore. The secondhand embarrassment was strong enough. We didn't need it a third or fourth time. But I just love how this episode just had so much fun with the visuals. Because I think one of the things that immediately stole anime fans' hearts in back in Season 1 when this was kicking off was the brilliant directing style, right? And I think for something dealing with music and, you know, rapping and the lyrics and everything, good voice acting, good, obviously, songs if they're going to have songs as well, or just at the very least the backdrop, beat, and things like that. But the directing as well can go a long way and elevate something that people probably loved in the manga, thought it was meme-worthy and hilarious, and turn it into something that's like literally a masterpiece-level episode, and that's honestly what this one felt like. Because seriously, the number of style changes they did from like old-school rap videos that you might have saw on MTV, right? You know, just the way they had like the old-school camera filters and the kind of like boxed-in TV kind of perspective to them even honestly like I feel like sometimes the way they were like duplicating the character models and kind of stretching the perspective you could have like said that was a queen music video in all honesty right there's just so much creativity to the different performances and how they continue to just use the visual medium to its full potential you can't look at an episode like this and say they didn't use everything at their disposal no they did and then some I love the fact that like when they pulled away into the wider shot and you saw the location, they were using that as a turntable. There's just a lot of creativity to it alongside voice actors who are clearly having a great time in the recording booth. It's very easy to tell when a voice actor is having a good time, and these are the episodes that really say that, right? You know, it's just one of those things that in between lines, you know you're busting your ass off laughing because 
it's just so ridiculous and you have characters who have been so cool calm and collected you know in comparison to what happened here and then they just let it all out and then they just end the episode so casually with talking about you know this new girl who basically wants to try to break up her friend because she likes her friend's you know boyfriend because that's her crush and then they just start talking about sex and they title it s e k and i love the fact that these three because they all have someone they can't have yet, or or at the very least, they don't have the nerve to admit their feelings. Miyuki, obviously, with Kaguya. And then, of course, we now have Yu with his own crush from the previous season there. And then, of course, this girl with the uh, kind of breaking up, who seems to probably have already had sex. And that Nirvana Holy Land is not going to be broken easily. Just the way the show can continue to build on its previous jokes or setup moments, like the fact of the boys love joke with Chika. Or this girl trying to break up, you know, her friend because she wants the boyfriend there. And just everything like that. While simultaneously, you know, making something that has made every anime fan collectively agree with Chica. No more rapping. To then making it work out and feeling like it was a well-earned victory. I mean, Chica and Miyuki have had some highs and lows in teaching one another how to do things. Mostly Chica teaching Miyuki. But goddamn, leave it to this man to somehow teach her and make her actually solid enough that she could then teach him, and then we could have damn near 10 minutes of just amazingness that was so amateur hour, but it was catchy as shit. I don't know, like, I truly feel like Kagi-sama is just on a steady climb. The first season immediately stole my heart, saying it's probably my favorite rom-com. Season 2 took what I thought was a perfect formula, improved it by just making the jokes slightly more entertaining, but mainly making the emphasis on the emotional, primarily you for sure, as being like, holy shit, they can really write some impressive character arcs. And season three, if you really compare, like, they've already had a good taste of emotional, but when we take the absolute insanity of the comedy design this season and the directing and how it feels like a team that's really just honed their craft, they understand how far they can push Kaguya-sama, and because we have so many different establishing jokes or themes, they can flesh it out now so well because they've been built up subtly in the background, and what I thought was the funniest shit back in Season 1 now seems so basic when I look at the comedy design in Season 3. I'm just glad this one seems to just keep coming out. I mean, had the pandemic not happened, I imagine we would have got this season sooner, but I imagine like this show is going to be going on for a while, and I'm excited to see where they're going to go because this was probably the best Kagi-sama episode for me personally, like, if I'm looking at it on an emotional level, sure, there's different episodes I would pick. But in terms of just sheer, how do I not rewatch this a dozen times? This is the episode for me. It really is. And this season has been chock full of best Kaguya moments. But goddamn, thoughts if you have any on the profanity, on the sex topics, on the rapping, on the will they, won't they boys love that isn't really boys love, but of course Chica thinks it is. Thoughts down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here. Until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.